The other thing we want to talk about here is cognitive theory of multimedia. And thinking of multimedia, sometimes you get this picture here of, of a computer screen and, and uh, keyboards and technology and gadgets, when actually multimedia is really just about, vis about seeing and hearing, having those two different channels being utilized, chalkboard in a lecture, reading a book and talking about it together. Those things could be examples of multimedia. The cognitive theory of multimedia is based on three assumptions. The first one is called the dual channels. Dual channels is the, the idea that we have uh, information that comes in visually and audio, the audio on two different channels. And for the most part, researchers and, and, and folks agree that this is, this is accurate. However, there is some discussion or differing opinions about how written text is processed. What information channel does that come in on? And there's those that are of the representation mode who believe in that, that say that visual text is processed as a verbal channel. Even though you're reading it with your eyes, you're verbalizing that internally and it's being processed through the audio channel. There's the uh, <clears throat> sensory mode folks who believe that it is done do, through the visual channel and that as you read things, it's coming in through your vision, through your eyes, and that is how it's processed. Regardless of those two differing opinions, the point of this is that you want to try and make sure you don't overload one of those two channels. You want to try and utilize both of them. Think about if you're listening to two different radio stations at the same time, both coming in through an audio channel could be rather distracting, or trying to watch two different things at the same time they again may interfere with each other and actually be counterproductive. The second assumption is that there's a limited capacity. <clears throat> These are sticks of RAM which are going to a computer and RAM is the type of working memory that a computer uses to handle processes that are actively uh, taking place. And what RAM does is it tries to process the items that are being done and eventually you would save those into long-term memory which you would consider a hard drive or an external hard drive. But the limited capacity just is kind of like what we talked about before with extraneous <clears throat> cognitive load, that people have a limited amount of space and a limited amount of time to be able to handle information. And so we have to be uh, conscious of people's limited capacity. Then the last thing is active processing. And active processing deals with attending to relevant incoming information, organizing it into coherent representations, and integrating mental representations to other knowledge. So what does all that mean? It means being able to take, pro take information in through different channels and being able to organize it and figure out how it's going to be used and then remembering it. Uh, doing a puzzle, seeing the picture, being able to see the pieces, organizing them, putting them together to make a picture. The keys to successful active processing include selecting, organizing, and integrating. And a quality multimedia message must contain all three. For example, let's say I want to show how to build a shed. I'm going to show the materials and I may group them into categories. And then I'm going to show some steps about how we're going to build it. Take you through the sequence of how the shed will be completed. Cognitive load theory and cognitive theory of multimedia learning are similar in that they both are concerned with the amount of content that's presented and how the overall, what the overall focus is. Being sure that the content that's being delivered or presented is appropriate and is necessary towards getting you to the uh, end goal of your lesson. So again, you can think about the uh, intrinsic and sometimes think about that as the dual channels. You can think about limited um, capacity along with extraneous cognitive load, and you can think about active processing along with germane cognitive load. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about these two theories, and I hope you're able to implement them in your class as we move forward.